Okay, folks, joining right now is one of my longtime friends, one of the greatest WWE superstars of all time, Brutus the Barber Beefcake. Brother Brutai, it's great to have you back here, Boxborough, Massachusetts, for Summer Northeast Comic Con. We have a lot to talk about. You're looking great as ever, strong as ever. How's it going today, brother? Hey, it's going great, man. I'm just happy to be here. Uh, you know, I enjoy getting out and meeting the fans, and this gives me that opportunity. You know, and it's good to see you, Big Bad Bob. Yeah, exactly. It's been a while, man. We go way back. We go way back. And uh, one of the things that we've always talked about with Brutus uh, for about 10 years, about getting a book made, an autobiography of his exciting life, about everything he's gone to in the last 30 to 40 years, um, just through everything as a, a superstar with WWE, with WCW, uh, to Florida, uh, living in the van down by the river, as though they speak. I mean, you paid your dues in a way that no one else pays the dues. They didn't have they have the wrestling schools now on every corner. You guys didn't have that back. You got to go in there and, and how was it? So let's talk about it here. Brutus the Barber Beefcake, cutting and strutting. You can get it online at BrutusTheBarberBeefcake.com. You can order the book right now. It's about 400 pages, pictures, everything is in here. Tell the fans right now why they need to buy this book. Man, because this book has been rated, Amazon rated at five stars. Wow. And wrestling books don't get five stars. Yeah. But Kenny Casanova, and I got to give my wife credit to Missy. I mean, you, like you said, 10 years. This book has been a long time in yeah. the making. Yeah. And uh, our, our, our good friend who passed several years ago, Scott Epstein, yeah. he was a big part of helping get me started on the book. Yeah. And uh, God rest his soul. And then finally, you know, uh, Ken, uh, Kenny Casanova came along and really spurred it. And then Missy... Missy got in there and we got in the trenches and we just really put our heads into it. And, and the book just came out fantastic. It's just, but it's a happy book. It's a fantastic story book that just tells, tell it all, tells it like it is. But, you know, doesn't, uh, not at somebody's expense. Right, right. It, it, it tells That's the great, cool fun stories that everybody likes to hear and, and let you kind of use your own imagination. And, and you, know you know what, you've told me so many amazing stories just by me hanging out with you and that's why it's about your time in Japan uh, dealing with the Japanese mafia or, or uh, uh, geez, when, when you and Hulk had a, a working out and, and lifting and having the power shakes and uh, I, I mean living in Tampa and, and all these great stuff so I can't wait to do uh, tonight when I come home and, and after the convention's over and read the book. I mean there's so many great stories so we're talking about starts off in Florida all right, you and Hulk living in the van down by the river. Well, it even it's, it goes way back. It starts in my childhood and growing up and hunting and fishing and doing stuff, you know, and, and baseball in Florida and, and, and in the early days. I mean, Hulk was a baseball player too. He, you know, I used to go watch his team when when I was nine years old. I, I watched him play. He was twelve. He was the biggest kid in the league. Right. And uh, he was he was so chubby that he could barely run the bases. Right. Right. You know, I seen a hit hit the fence just smashed, crushed the ball, hit the fence, and barely make it to first base. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. he was a big guy like me, but then he lost his weight, and I'm still trying, brother. Uh, uh, that's what's so great about the, uh, the life story. There. Now, I know Hulk was in a band for 10 years. Did you, did you, did you travel around with him? Did you, what were you doing for the 10 years? You weren't in a band, so. No, I you didn't travel just... with him in the okay. band, but I used to, we Hang used to out go, and go to the stuff and go everything. To, go yeah. see, watch the band, along with a lot of other people. A lot of the wrestlers, uh, they had a great band. So all the local wrestlers in Florida, uh, the Eddie Graham's uh, guys, you know, uh, Mike Mike Graham, the Briscoes, um, the, the managers, uh, Engelbert, uh, oh, I'm not Engelbert, uh, Humperdink. Yeah, Oliver uh, Humperdink. Oliver Humperdink. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the guys, yeah. they, they 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 loved to uh, to watch the band. It was it was a great band called Ruckus. Yeah. And uh, so you know that's all we all kind of came together and you know Hogan and I went to the same high school so you know. It's, we were running in the same circles. We all went to the same beaches and all went to the same bars, you know. And so, you know, that's how we had become friends. And then we went to the same gym. And we were working out in the same gym for years be before the wrestling thing ever came along. Now, you just started the GoFundMe account to help with your knee replacement. How's your knee holding up? All the wrestling fans uh, pitched in and helped you out. And how did that go out, bro? I just, I, I just want to, you know, from my heart to all the fans out there, just want to thank them from the bottom of my heart. That's so much for their, their generosity and their kindness has been tremendous. Um, we're still in the middle of getting bills paid, so keep up coming, whatever you can spare. It's all good. I don't know you want to pan in. You can show uh, that's the knee after about three and a half weeks. And uh, we're still, uh, I'm still definitely in the middle of a, a long rehab and, uh, and getting those bills paid, the hospital and, and the doctors. 
So it's all out of pocket, no insurance these days. You know, and we, and we talked about, uh, uh, it's funny, because Hulk said, you know what, I wish my finishing maneuver was the sleeper hold uh, because of, uh, what, he had about six back surgeries, eight back surgeries with that leg drop that he did. And you wrestled for a long time. I know you retired about two or three years ago, you're telling me. But you know what, geez, you, you really had a nice, safe style that allowed you to bring the guy in, get him in the sleeper, knock him out, cut his hair, let's go home, brother. You know what I mean? So. I have 40, I retired to 40 years wow. in the wrestling business, which is pretty much unheard of and never had any surgeries related to those right, injuries. Exactly. But the, after the, you know, the 40 something years of weightlifting and the 40 years of wrestling, uh, eventually it just, it, the knees wore out, the, yeah. the, the knee wore out. Yeah. So I had, I had to get it done. It was part of it. But uh, yeah, Hogan, 12, 12 back surgeries, both hips replaced, both knees replaced. Um, yeah, he's he's sounds a, like the bionic man right there. Yes, right? yeah, it takes him a half hour to get out of bed yeah. in the morning. And, right. uh, I'm I'm just thanking God that you don't uh, have to go through that. And, yeah. yeah, you know, I'm I'm into my first big surgery. Yeah. What do you think about the wrestling business today? It was so different than when you started. Now there is so many wrestling promotions. There's wrestling schools. There's social media on the internet now where people can write something. Look at Roseanne. She wrote something stupid and just cost her the whole job. Well, they all, all of her castmates got a job, but her, I mean, she just got to talk herself out of the job. I mean, thank God you didn't have social media in the 80s, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys would all be saying something about Vince. We'd all be in trouble, right? It wouldn't have been there as much fun. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, for sure. Right. So my looking over, uh, Uncle, with uh, Vince. The man looking over your shoulder yeah. all the time. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's great. Uh, what was some of your favorite memories uh, in WWE that you can look back at uh, that we want to ask you about? Well, working with Bobby Heenan, you know, uh, Kurt Henning, G Gorilla Monsoon, you know, all those guys, tremendous, tremendous individuals and super, uh, super nice guys. And then we miss them all. And uh, WCW, I was just watching the Booty Man this week and everything. Do you have any great memories uh, for you running uh, WCW, guys you're working with there? Well, everybody was, everybody was pretty cool. I remember uh, one guy in particular who, you know, just hates my guts. His name's Eric, Bis Eric Bischoff, and yeah. I'm sure you know who he is. And yeah, I, I actually re I heard that video this week. Yeah. And he goes around the country dogging me and saying bad things. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, and he's the guy who never put on a pair of wrestling boots. Yeah. In my opinion, doesn't know jack about wrestling and pretty much was running the WCW and when it went out of business when the greatest run the WCW and Ted Turner right. was had ever seen exactly. yep. and was rolling like a juggernaut somehow him and his greedy friends decide, uh, were able to sink the whole company and ruined, uh, put everybody out of business. I totally agree with you. I just talked to Kevin Sumlin about that. They put the world title on David Arquette. They put the world title on Vince Russo, and I think actually Eric won the uh, the belt. But th th there's so much that went happened during that period. But that's how you sink the company. You put the belt in some marks that have never been in the ring, and, and then you and have overpay everybody. And overpay everybody with Ted Turner's money. Well, brother, I want to thank you so much for your time. It's always an honor, folks. Remember, it's at BrutusTheBeefcake.com right here. The name of the book is called Brutus the Barber Beefcake, Cutting and Strutting. It's 400 pages and more. You gotta read it. You gotta get it today. You gotta talk about this amazing. Amazing life, everything that Brutus has done, traveling around the world, not just the United States, around the world, uh, fighting some of the greatest superstars in history and becoming one of the greatest superstars in history, Brutus the Barber Beefcake.